I'd like to thank you for the honor of being able to give a lecture series here at this institution. And um, my aim is to give an introduction to motivic homotopy theory. Uh, so I would like to start by inviting all the experts on motivic homotopy theory. There are many around. Please use your devices. Feel free to check your email or write referee reports or whatever. Yeah? But I will try to have the first talk sort of a bit elementary and sort of give a construction of the morel wawotsky motivic homotopy category and then pass on to a stable theory and then ideally some, some computations in the later talks. So this is roughly the idea. We'll see how it goes. The microphone? Uh -huh. There was some. No, it should be working. It's okay? Good. Okay, um, okay so although there are, of course, precursors. Suslin, Harubi, and others. The motivic homotopy theory or A1 homotopy theory sort of was founded by Morel and Wawotsky. The sort of recommended reading is their single common publication. And it's from 1999. I think on the archive it appeared uh, three years before. Um, so what is the aim? We should say aims. Um, sort of depending on your perspective, there were, um, I, I would like to mention three aims. The first one was to embed motivic cohomology into a certain framework such that you can study cohomology operations and this led to with work of other people to a proof of the Blochkato and Ilno conjectures. And this is one example of a homology theory on smooth varieties which is representable in the setup but there are many other examples um, and in principle it is interesting to study other cohomology theories and examples are K theory algebraic Fordism, and there are many others. Um, this is another reasonable aim uh, to find a rich enough framework for that. And the very ambitious aim, which was often formulated by Morel in talks about this subject, is uh, to do for smooth varieties what a classical homotopy theory does for smooth manifolds. Yeah, one could argue to some extent that if you have um, sort of high-dimensional smooth manifolds, 
say dimension at least five, then their classification can be reduced to homotopy theoretical data. I'm not saying that this is easy or simple. Uh, and a very ambitious aim is to do something similar for smooth varieties over a field. So this is um, sort of the three aims. Uh, and of course, if you like, I can be more precise by stating sort of um, stating concrete theorems that I would like to discuss to some extent and maybe even sketch proofs to some extent. So here's some, some examples. So for notation, take a field and smooth varieties um, over that field are denoted f. So, um, one theorem that I'm going to discuss is due to Mogal and Wawatsky. And it claims that there exist strong symmetric monoidal functors. category of smooth varieties to a certain homotopy category associated to this, this field, the A1 homotopy category, and then there's a further functor to a stable homotopy category, a P1 suspension functor, um, and this functor factors the functor which associates to a smooth F variety its, its motive. Yeah? So this is Vovotsky's uh, big triangulated category of motives. So there is a functor going this way. Um, so this is um, one uh, interesting theorem and as a consequence you get Basically, as a consequence of this construction, you get this representability theorem for motivic cohomology, and you get tools for studying operations of motivic cohomology in here. So this is sort of taking, to some extent, care of part one. I should say at this point that Matthias Wendt, in his lecture series, will uh, give more details on motivic cohomology uh, on perhaps also some other perspectives. Okay, so this is um, one thing regarding the second aim. There's the following theorem. Which I'd like to attribute to Wawatsky and Mark Levine. Um, and this says that algebraic uh, K theory. This is representable both in the A1 homotopy category and in the stable homotopy category. And moreover, oh, should I use this here? Okay. Yeah, I was wondering about the noise, whether I was the only one disturbed by it, but maybe I was not. Okay, let's see how this... Oh, much better, thank you. <laughs> um, there's a... strongly convergent spectra sequence. Maybe not. Um, um, which computes algebraic K theory and having as input um, motivic cohomology. Okay. 
So this is one example um, where aim two um, is uh, taken care of. And I will also s mention um, results going in, in this direction, but this will not be the, the main focus. This is a very ambitious aim. Um, um, yeah, let me, let me mention maybe the following. So, uh, regarding the attributions here, um, I'm not 100% sure, but sort of the main theorem goes back to Morel, who um, dealt uh, with almost all cases, and there have been some uh, generalizations due to Azok, Hoyoa, and Wendt. So, vector bundles. Um, of a smooth affine schemes. They are representable in the A1 homotopy category of the field. So, um, analyzing vector bundles, classes defined using vector bundles is important. Uh, I mean, in the classical case for this classification of smooth manifolds, and this is also important for smooth varieties. Um, let me just mention one construction which will be important. So if P to X is a vector bundle. Um, then one can construct uh, its tomb space. Um, so if I write down a, a, a section of a vector bundle, most likely it's going to be the zero section. But if I want to be explicit, Probably it's called Z or zero. Mm -hmm. um, so the tome space of the vector bundle is the quotient. does not make sense uh, in smooth varieties in general, but it makes sense in this um, A1 homotopy category. And we have the following theorem, which is um, also due to Murai Wobotsky, and it is called homotopy purity. And the situation is as follows. I take a smooth pair, so a closed embedding of some smooth uh, F variety into another smooth F variety. Then there is an equivalence of the tomb space of the normal bundle of this inclusion with the following quotient. Um, the quotient value collapses the open complement of C. And this is uh, a motivic version of what is in classical uh, a geometry of smooth manifolds called tubular neighborhood. And we will um, 
I mean, there, there are several applications of this, this important theorem, and um, in particular the following one. which also goes back to Wotsky. There's an account by Joël Rioux, also an account by Hugo and Krisch, in the work of Joseph Ayub. And uh, it says the following, if X is not only smooth, but also projective, then it has a strong dual. in the stable homotopy category of that. And it's given as follows. You take the tom space, which is actually a spectrum uh, of a virtual vector bundle, and this is minus um, the tangent bundle of x. So this is something which does not make sense in vector bundles, but in the K-theory. So let me take these classes here so that we think of it as a class in K0 of X. Um, yeah. And this is then viewed in the stable homotopy category. Of F. And uh, the lecture series given by uh, Frédéric de Glees will um, discuss um, an approach uh, to these two um, statements. Um, okay, and maybe one, one final statement. So implicit in this statement here is that um, in this uh, strong symmetric monoidal functor is that we have a symmetric monoidal structure in this stable homotopy category, and there's a unit for this structure. Um, and the endomorphisms, so the maps of um, this object to itself, This is the golden equilibrium of the field. Yeah, the golden equilibrium of uh, symmetric bilinear forms. And this has consequences then, which have been explored recently by Mark Levine, Cass Wickelgren, and others. Uh, there's sort of a a version of enumerative geometry where the classical degree as an integer is replaced by the degree taking place in this code dequittering of f, so a quadratic form version of degree. Yeah, so these are sort of some, some uh, theorems um, that are interesting in connection with this um, motivic homotopy theory and um, if you also still think that so at least some of these statements are interesting you might enjoy seeing a construction and um, I think I will be a bit sketchy if you want to see more details just let me know so, first of all, when it comes to discussing uh, functoriality, and this will be um, employed in Frederick de Glees' talk, it makes sense to think of this homotopy theory not only over the spectrum of a field, but more general schemes. A particular interesting case is the uh, case of Dedekind rings. Um, so, the, the, the a convenient setup is the, is the following. We say that a base scheme is 
also an Ethereum uh, scheme of finite crawl dimension. And smooth S is then a category of smooth S schemes. And smooth incorporates a finite type condition. So in particular, anything uh, in here is again a base scheme. Uh, the morphisms in here are just arbitrary morphisms. They do not have to be smooth. Okay. Um, so the aim is to do a homotopy theory, uh, which sort of allows us to make sense of something like the tome space, uh, something like a like a suspension spectrum suspensions in general. Uh, so in order to do this, we need to enlarge this category um, and um, pay some attention to en the enlargement. Um, yeah. And with the view towards homotopy theory, it's convenient to do this enlargement simplicially. And this is the following space over S is a pre sheaf on this category with values in the category of simplicial sets. So take your favorite skeleton of the category of finite non empty ordinals and monotone maps. And uh, functors on that, these are simplicial sets. And then we get a category of, of spaces over S. And um, in order to define a homotopy theory, one convenient way of uh, proceeding is uh, to specify a notion of weak equivalence. So there are sort of um, various approaches to this, either using model categories or infinity categories. Um, I'll probably stick to the model category version. But um, um, before getting into the weak equivalences, let me fix some notation. So if you have a simplicial set, then we get a constant pre-sheaf So this is the constant space over S. This is one, one option that we have. And the other option is, of course, to embed smooth varieties over S uh, in spaces using the Unida embedding. So if you have x smooth over s, um, this is sent to your neta of x. But I will usually leave this out and just denote it as x. So this is discrete and representable. So the simplicial set of maps from uh, y to x is really just a set of maps from y to x and it defines this, this pre sheaf Okay, and um, in a certain sense the category spaces is of course generated by these two, by the constant simplicial pre-sheaves 
and by the discrete representable precious. Mm -hmm. um, but other constructions we have are, of course, this tome space construction, which is uh, still on the board. So maybe more, more generally, uh, if u to x is an open embedding, then we have x modulo u. So this is the pre-sheaf gotten as this quotient. And in particular, the tome space of some vector bundle exists in this category of spaces over us. questions so far? Yes, this I did not really define. Um, so, this is the set of maps in smooth S schemes from U to X. Thank you. Oh, uh, it is. It's just a set. So, in particular, a simplicial set. Yeah, this is what is meant by discrete. Yeah. Further questions? Yeah. Then I'd like to define um, or give another example of a space. So it takes x and associates to it first the category of vector bundles over x and isomorphisms, which is an exact category in the sense of Quillen. So one can apply the Quillen's Q construction to it, which gives a sort of group completion on the level of exact categories. This category has a nerve, which is then a simplicial set. And um, one can take the simplicial loop space of this. And this is k of x. So by essentially by definition, the homotopy groups of this simplicial set are the algebraic k groups um, of x. Yeah, so notation for homotopy groups is high n. So these are Quillen's uh, k groups. Uh, later, uh, there were other types of k groups, like Milner k groups, Milner Witt k groups appear. So this is what the what this here stands for, Q stands for Quill. Here, I'm here for the Q construction, which is due to Quill. <laughs> Should I use this here? Okay. okay. Um, there's, oh, um, the variance missing. Um, there's a subtlety, this 
as, as it's defined as uh, perhaps not strictly functorial, uh, but one can modify this uh, in a suitable, suitable way so that this example makes sense. Um, okay. Um, now, um, for the homotopy theory, There are two types of restrictions that we want to consider. One is that the affine line should parametrize homotopies. And the other condition is that we have some gluing up to homotopy. But we already have some gluing in the category of smooth varieties uh, over S, uh, and this should be respected. Um, there are choices one, one can make here, and this basically amounts to choosing the correct uh, Grotendieck topology. Um, sort of by now uh, we have uh, sort of several at our disposal but sort of two classical ones are the Zariski and the Etal topology and uh, each has advantages and disadvantages for example one can look at the cohomological dimension and the question is, is the cohomological dimension the same as the Krull dimension? And this is the case in the Zariski topology. But it is not the case in the Etal topology. So the cohomological dimension of the real numbers with respect to the Etal topology is infinite. So this is where the Etal topology is bad. But then we can ask if we have a smooth pair is it the same as some affine space in some bigger affine space locally. Yeah, this is a property that smooth submanifolds in a smooth manifold have. Locally they look like some Euclidean space and some bigger Euclidean space. Um, this is the case in the Etal topology, but it's not the case in the Zariski topology. Just think of spec C lying in the affine line over R. Yeah. This is uh, a problem here. And another property one can look at is the, this, this K-theory functor. Uh, um, sort of, um, yeah. let me abbreviate this as K-theory descent. So K-theory does not satisfy descent with respect to the et al. topology, but thanks to results of Brown, um, it satisfies descent with respect to the Zariski topology which means that K groups uh, or sort of the risky open covers of a scheme help us to compute the K groups of the scheme. And this list can be extended a little, but it turns out that there is a topology in between which was uh, christened the completely decomposed topology by Yuri Nisnevich, um, and the cohomological dimension is the same as the Krull dimension. Locally, things look like affine space in a bigger, uh, smooth pairs look like affine space in a bigger affine space. And thanks to a theorem of Thomson and Troubault, K theory also satisfies Nisnevich descent. Yeah, so these are three indications, sort of having these theorems in mind. Um, that this is the correct type of glue. Um,
should I use this here? Okay. Or do we need another lecturer? I can dictate and some other person writes. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Um, so, weak equivalences. Um, in this category of spaces over S are generated. Um, by the following three requirements, the first one is that if there's a map of spaces which is already section-wise a weak equivalence of simplicial sets, then it should also be a weak equivalence in here. And the second condition is that if we really want to parametrize homotopies via the affine line, then in particular we want the affine line to be contractible. And um, the smallest sort of condition on this one can reason reasonably make up is that these projections are weak equivalences. And the last condition is the Nisnevich gluing. And uh, can be explained as follows for any pullback square. being eternal and P induces an isomorphism on the complements. Um, so this there is a closed subset. We equip it with a reduced structure. And um, this map induced by P should be an isomorphism. So for any such pullback square, um, we want that the gluing of Y and U along this pre-image, this maps canonically to X, and this should be a weak equivalence. So these are three conditions. And just for later use um, such squares will be called Nisnevich Stimbic squares. Um, and these squares characterize the Nisnevich topology, which I did not formally introduce as follows. Um, yeah, maybe I should, should write this down. Um, a pre sheaf uh, on this category pre -sheaf A is in this Nevich sheaf. if and only if the following two conditions are satisfied, A of the empty scheme over S has just one point, and A 
maps, these Lisnevich distinguished squares to pullbacks. So the formal um, definition of the Disnevich topology is via coverings. You say that a etal covering is an Disnevich covering um, if every morphism from a field to the scheme which is covered lifts to one member of the covering. Sort of the rough definition. So etal covers which split over fields. Okay. Uh, you didn't define properly this new uh, topology itself, yeah. but rather define what does uh, define the notion of this new shift. Yes. yes, yes. If this is acceptable. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And pullbacks or homotopy pullbacks? So here I mean uh, pullbacks. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, yeah, I, here I actually didn't specify what type of pre-sheaf this is. So you can think of a pre-sheaf with fairly thin sets, or simplicial sets, or abelian groups, or groups. Hmm. Maybe you want to uh, find out explicitly the uh, pullback square. Just to see Yeah, sure. So, oh, this is then all upside down, so this is a of x. A of U and A of Y and A of this here. Yeah, and in whatever category you um, uh, you are, um, this should then be uh, a pullback. So, does this answer your question? So, do I need to specify in more detail what I mean by generated in this sense here? There's a, pro a process called Bausfield localization. Yeah, I would specify what the local or vibrant objects are using these requirements and then get an associated notion of weak equivalence. Okay, uh, so if we have these uh, weak equivalences, one can then define this A1 homotopy category of S as inverting the weak equivalences. In this category of spaces. So let me give you some examples um, of properties that then hold in this homotopy category. We have the projective line over S with its standard covering and the intersection is um, the affine line minus zero. So this condition here applies because uh, this here is a special type of Nisnevich distinguished um, square. Um, I mean the, the complement in this case uh, is the point at infinity which is uh, precisely uh, sort of the complement here, the zero here. Yeah. So this is in this Nevich distinguished square, and therefore, um, if I take the push out here, it maps via weak equivalence here. But this here is, by the second condition, weakly equivalent to 
the space represented by S. Since this is the terminal scheme, uh, this is just a point. So what we get from this is that the projective line over S is a simplicial suspension, which is usually denoted sigma like this, of this term here. One can go further. Um, so let V over X be a vector bundle. And smooth over S. And um, what one can do is um, one can construct an A1 homotopy equivalence between v and x this way, uh, using the zero section. Um, yeah. By taking a vector and t and multiplying it with t. Yeah, this gives an A1 homotopy equivalence uh, between x and v. So in particular, this is also a weak equivalence. And this also gives us a different perspective on term spaces, if we like. So still having this vector bundle here, um, the term space is defined as, as the quotient V modulo the complement of the zero section. But you can also think of V as being an open subset of the projectivization of the direct sum of V with a trivial line bundle. And um, I mean, the, the complement here would then be the projectivization of V itself. And uh, what we have here also is the complement of the projectivization of this line bundle here, which is, which is just X here. Um, and in fact, uh, the intersection of these two, this just gives you the zero section, this here. So we have another example of an Isnevich distinguished square. Uh, so the term space, which is the quotient here, is equivalent to the quotient here. Um, but inside here, we have the projectivization of V. Uh, we have an inclusion here. And this is, in fact, the zero section of a specific line bundle over this space. Um, so this here is the zero section of the canonical bundle O of 1 over P of U. So the term space here is equivalent to the quotient here is equivalent to the quotient here. Maybe one more example of um, weak equivalence. Um, take SL2. So this is uh, 
the algebraic group of two by two uh, matrices uh, with uh, determinant one, and you have a map to um, a two minus zero. You can take a column or a row. You know, first row, last row, first column, last column. I don't know. Let's pick one. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe last. Column. Um, and then one can also check that um, this here uh, is an A1 equivalence. Um, basically, one can, one can take a point here and then compute the fiber, uh, and the fiber is an uh, affine line here. Yeah. This here is also weak equivalence. Um, yeah, and maybe hmm? it's an affine line. Yeah. Okay. Um, So let me now discuss, sort of to conclude, two important sort of structural properties of this homotopy category. Um, so the first one is a sort of basic functionality. If F is a morphism of base schemes, then there's an induced functor on the categories of smooth schemes. Um, so if you have a scheme Y, which is uh, smooth over T, you can form the pullback, which is then smooth over S. And this means that if you have a pre-sheaf on smooth over S, you will get a pre-sheaf on smooth over T. So what we have here is a functor, um, which is called F lower star. on the level of spaces. And this functor has a left adjoint defined by Kahn extension. So um, this left adjoint can be described by saying on representables it corresponds precisely to, to this construction here. The space over T represented by Y is sent to the space over S represented by the pullback uh, of S and Y over T. This determines this functor here and then the conditions that define the weak equivalences This section-wise condition is really uh, not interesting here. Um, these are preserved by pullback, and so are the Nisnevich distinguished squares. So uh, this here induces also an adjoint pair uh, on the homotopy categories in a suitable sense. But there is sort of more functoriality than just that, and I guess we will see plenty of functoriality in Frederic de Gliese's uh, lecture. Let me just add that if F is smooth, um, then 
one can send a smooth S scheme to a smooth T scheme just by composing. If you have X over S smooth, then you just compose it with S, uh, with F. So this also defines an adjoint pair of functors, but um, sort of the right adjoint in that pair is the left adjoint in this pair. So this defines left adjoint, which is usually denoted F lower sharp um, of F upper star. And uh, again, this here is then described on representables using this formula. So uh, space over S represented by X is mapped to this space over T represented by the same X. Yeah. Um, so this, again, behaves well with respect to the notion of weak equivalences in a suitable sense and defines also a functor on homotopy categories. Um, there's sort of one more structural thing that I wanted to, to mention and I'll do that tomorrow. Then. This is topological realization. Thank you. Yes, this and is possible. Uh, will it, uh, the theory work well? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Will it will give some convenience <laughs> or disconvenience. <laughs> um, well, it, it depends. In certain situations, a sort of appreciative co limit is easier to compute, but a sheaf co limit might be better behaved. So it is important to play between, to, to use the interplay between various, various models here. I may mean, specify uh, yeah. a question. Just yeah. uh, suppose we have this uh, space of this formula over x of b and uh, some space uh, over y. Uh, of w, and we like to smash, and usual formula in topology uh, tells us that this is some space uh, of, or, of v plus uh, w. So ah, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This holds on the level of sheaves. Yeah. This right. holds <laughs> on the level of sheaves. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not in the level A1 from out of the category, but on the level uh, yeah. of shifts rather. Yeah. Yeah. And this doesn't hold on the level of I do not think so. Eh? I do not think so. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> so maybe there are uh, more comments or uh, more questions. Then let's... Uh,